Hey everybody, welcome back to the Frugal Filmmaker Q&A. That's the show where you send me a filmmaking question and I try to answer it. Remember, if you'd like your question read on the show, to send me an email to thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com or you can comment below or you can send me a message on Twitter at Frugal Filmmaker. My video last week was part zero in a new series I've started called How to Make a Frugal Film, which is basically my technique on how I make a short, inexpensive movie. And in this part, I actually talk about audience creation or how you might want to cultivate an audience before you actually start making movies. That way, when you do have a movie to show, you've actually got eyeballs ready to watch it, something that extends beyond your friends or family. So if that's something that's interesting to you, please check it out. Okay, let's answer some questions. The first one comes from a YouTube comment on that video from Sam Degree, who says, a video in a Facebook post and a blog post in one week, every week? Now that's a full-time job, man. Seriously, how on earth do you realistically suggest people do that while living a normal life? This is a really good question. Just to recap in that video, I challenge everyone watching it that if you were to create a video and a Facebook post and a blog post every week for the space of a year, that at the end of that year, you would have generated some kind of an audience that would be ready to watch your work. And that is a big challenge, I admit. It is hard to do. It is hard to do something on a consistent basis, especially when you're talking about making videos or maybe detailed blog posts. Now, I didn't really say how detailed or how intricate these things had to be because they really don't. They could be as large or as small as you're willing to make them, but they do take work and they do take effort. And doing things on a regular basis is really a challenge, as Sam Tree points out here. How do you do this while you're living a normal life? How do you do this while you have a full-time job? Well, I can tell you how I did it. Uh, which was when I was in school when I started this, I was actually doing all my videos at night when everyone was asleep. So I was putting in some crazy extra hours and I was shooting things in all my spare time. And basically all the time that I wasn't focused on my regular life, I was focused on making movies or making videos or blogging or doing stuff on Facebook. And it's no secret that it takes a lot of hard work and effort and time to accomplish anything with this method because you're not gonna be an overnight success in anything that you do, and there's no guarantee you'll have any kind of success. However, I think my point in the video was is that if you were to do these things on a regular basis, you would have some kind of an audience when you were done. I wasn't specific on how large of an audience because of course that's impossible to predict, but you would have a core group of fans that were interested in what you were doing, even if what you were doing isn't necessarily super great, but it would be something that you were developing and you were learning and you would just get better over time and your fans would be there to support you. And even though it might appear there's a glut of stuff on the internet and you just think there's no way I'm ever gonna get noticed because there's just millions of people out there making videos, but I believe that you'll have a small group of interested people that will not only be willing to watch your stuff, but support you in other ways. It just depends on how much work you're willing to put into this. And even though it might seem futile at times, it will always be satisfying to you to just produce things that you really like. And hopefully though that will translate into maybe something more. Again, no guarantees, but I encourage people to do this because that's something that I've done that I've seen enough success at that I think it's possible to achieve greater success. It's just all stepping stones and it does take time and effort and a lot of patience. Speaking of YouTube, we have a comment from Pepsi and Lemonade, great name for a YouTube channel, by the way, who says, what are your thoughts on commenting on other people's YouTube videos? Things like, check out my latest short film, or subscribe to my channel for funny videos, things that are nothing but self-advertising. Personally, this is something that I don't like to do. I would never go on someone else's video and mention myself or my channel and how great it was and how you needed to come check it out. Even if it was kind of an honest plea, and not being obnoxious. I don't think it just works that well. I don't know how many people are really motivated to click on your YouTube channel based on you saying, hey, come and watch my stuff. I think a better technique, if you're going to go this route, is to just comment on other channels or other videos. And when people see that maybe your comments are intelligent or you have really something interesting to say, they will then go to your channel to check it out and see where that interesting perspective comes from. I think that's a better technique than just bragging about how good your stuff is or just a call to action to come see or come watch your stuff. I don't think that really works as well. It's not something that I do. Another way obviously is just to make good content and then word will get out, hey, this is a really interesting channel or this is a really interesting filmmaker and people will then come to you that way. Recently I saw a video on YouTube with an interview of, with Steve Martin who claimed one of his secrets to success was that he would just he'd do things that people couldn't ignore. And that's definitely true on YouTube. And even though you might never have a viral video, I've never had one, um, but you might do something that gets passed around because it generates some interest or something different or something unique. I think it's a much better way to get people to come to your channel and watch your videos than just to say, come to my channel and watch my videos. Okay, next up is Mr. Pefsky, who says, what's that behind you over your left shoulder? It looks like a change counter or a plastic Nerf gun. Well, Mr. Pefsky, it is a plastic Nerf gun. This is actually a prop that I made for a movie. I actually had to make four of these uh, for a short film or a thesis film a friend of mine made called Perfect Machine. It was a dystopian future uh, sci-fi short. 
And uh, this is the Nerf rough cut, ironically enough. And he wanted these, he picked these out and he wanted these colors, which were very dystopian, of course, black and gray. I've used that uh, color scheme myself. He wanted LEDs to be here and also an LED in each barrel. There are eight barrels. So I have some LEDs in here, as you can see, it still works. There's actually a nine volt battery right here powering all of this. Uh, it's actually loose now. I hot glued it into place, but it's loose. Um, so you can see all the lights uh, work and this was as well as the action here. So this was kind of a stun gun type of a thing that some soldiers carried that I made and this is the prototype. Now to get this color scheme to adhere to this plastic, this is actually spray paint um, and I've since learned a better method of painting plastic Nerf guns or any kind of prop plastic weapons that you want to make look sci-fi-ish or, or otherwise. And that's because I came across a video on YouTube or a channel on YouTube called Coop772. Maybe you've heard about it if you're a nerfer. Um, and I'm not a nerfer, but in doing research after the fact, after I'd built this, I came across this channel. And uh, he has a much better way of painting plastic for this type of a thing for movie props or whatever. So uh, check out his channel. I'll leave a link down below in the description, definitely. Uh, he uses vinyl dye, which is out of a spray can, which is like spray paint, only it sticks a lot better. Our final question comes from email from Eric Barnhill, who says... I notice you have ads on your blog. How do you get paid for that? Is that affiliate marketing? How would you suggest getting started and getting paid for ads on a blog or a website? Well, you are correct, Eric. It is affiliate marketing. I am an Amazon affiliate and I'm an eBay partner, as well as being a YouTube partner, but that really doesn't make any difference anymore because everybody gets paid for YouTube videos if you so choose to monetize them. I do have a link that goes to Amazon and a link that goes to eBay. And if you go through those links, you can help support me because everything you buy when you're going through those links will, I will get a small percentage of. Um, now, as far as getting set up and that kind of thing, anybody can do this, of course. Anybody can be an Amazon affiliate. Anybody can be an eBay partner. So once you've registered with these websites, then when you go through Amazon, you can then find specific products and click on a button that will allow you to generate links with your ID code embedded in them. And then when you use these links with your ID code and people go through them, uh, you will get a percentage of whatever they buy. But of course, for this to even work, you gotta have a lot of people doing this to generate any meaningful income. You just have to be able to drive traffic, and I've been at it for a while, so it's helped me, especially, you know, I'm doing DIY stuff. I usually try and always get things, of course, that people can buy on Amazon or eBay, not just because, well, I'm an affiliate and I, you know, want them to buy stuff there, but because that's usually where the, they're the greatest resource for all this stuff. Uh, whether it's uh, branded or non-branded or it's local or coming from China or whatever. I can usually find various parts. Even here in Alaska, they can send stuff to me and I can put stuff together and then describe how I made it and then get a parts list and have most of the stuff coming from Amazon or eBay or your hardware store or whatever. But that, that's what I do. One thing I'm trying out, which I think is a little bit different than what most other web pages do or other blogs, which is in most blogs, they'll say, you know, click here to check out this equipment list and see the things that I use, and then you can purchase things from that list. But I know from experience or just in basic you know, web stuff is that the more links you have people go through, you're gonna lose people every time they have to click on something. So I think this is a much better way to generate income because you're only asking for people to click once and they can start shopping versus here, click on this list and then look through this stuff. And if it's something you want, click on that and that'll take it to the site. That's two or three clicks right there and I'm getting rid of those and just having direct links right on my blog so people can go right to the homepage and start shopping. Of course, I also realize that maybe people don't know about this as much, and it's something I just started doing, so I'm trying to get the word out. So I highly recommend affiliate marketing. It's an easy way that anybody can get into generating some dollars for their, their blog or their website or their videos or whatever. The only other way you're really gonna be able to generate income is to get people to place ads on your website or blog. And to do that, you're gonna have to have some numbers behind what you're doing. If you're just starting out, there's no way you're gonna have enough traffic to try and court some kind of advertiser to place advertisements on your on your blog and usually they won't pay you anyway they'll ask for some kind of trade you know you'll get x number of credits for whatever our service is um, or something like that they'll really give you money i've had a hard time getting people to give me money to put ads on my blog so i'm going the affiliate route and hitting that pretty hard and that seems to have worked for me fairly well again not so much that i can live on but enough to say pay rent and that's all the questions we have today i'd like to thank everyone for writing in of course i appreciate the emails and the comments and the tweets and anything else support wise or question wise that you guys might have for me Appreciate your patronage and watching the videos, very, very helpful. I also like to mention that if you watched my last video, you may have noticed that there was a debut of a new domain name that I'm using, which is frugfilm.com instead of the frugalfilmmaker.com. 
GoDaddy was having a $1 sale on domain names, so I thought I would try something super short. The frugalfilmmaker.com has a lot of syllables in it. Frugfilm.com is much shorter, so I thought I would try it and incorporate it in my videos, and it's much easier to spread around. And if people are familiar with the blog, they know what it means anyway. If they don't, maybe it's not such a good move, but the other address is still active and always will be. At any rate, if you've got a question and you'd like it read on the show, please send me an email to thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. That's your best chance you have of getting your question read on the show, or you can leave a comment below, or you can send me a message on Twitter at Frugal Filmmaker. Now there will be an official Frugal Filmmaker video this Friday and another Q&A on Tuesday, so we'll see you then. Bye-bye.